It's a small body. It should have cooled off long ago. Nothing very interesting is going on. And when we actually got out to Ceres, nothing could have been further from the truth. March 2015, NASA's Dawn probe arrives at Ceres. As the Dawn spacecraft pulled up to Ceres, we saw the craters and the surface that we expected to see. And then all of a sudden, something totally mysterious rotated into view. One of the craters had two bright spots, almost like two eyes staring right back at us. It was such a puzzle to the science community because what are these doing here? Are they ice? It looks very fresh. What on earth could it be? Scientists find over a hundred of these mysterious white spots. The largest is in a 50 mile wide crater called Akator. They are unexpectedly made up of a substance we find on Earth, sodium carbonate, a kind of salt. We believe the salts on Ceres are actually very young. We think they're as young as four million years old, and that's basically like yesterday in terms of geology. And now that is super weird, right? That's happening not on sort of a geologic era. It's happening now, today. What could cause patches of salt on a world long presumed dead? Planetary geologist Janie Radaba believes a clue might be found at Mono Lake in California. All right, I'm here looking at this beautiful lake off in the distance and standing on massive white deposits. These white deposits used to be a part of this lake at one point. The lake had dissolved a lot of the materials in it and then as it receded, it left behind the materials as it evaporated away. And these things are, you know, salts. They're kind of granular in texture. And uh, just to make sure we taste it and yeah, sure enough, it's salty. The salt at Lake Mono crystallizes as the water evaporates, the only way it can form. The researchers believe the same process is taking place on Ceres. This means there must be liquid water beneath the surface. But how out in the deep freeze of the asteroid belt? These bright spots are located in the centers of craters. They're located around cracks in the surface. And that is telling us that this material is coming from under the surface and welling up onto it. Absolutely nobody expected there to be liquid water beneath the surface of Ceres. We cannot explain what is keeping that water warm. On some moons, gravitational tugging keeps the interiors warm, but Ceres is not really near anything else that's very large. So the amazing thing is that we may not even understand how rocky planets work. There may be another source of energy, another mechanism for heating the interior that we haven't even discovered yet. To find out how Ceres has liquid water, we have to rewind the clock 4.6 billion years. Debris left over from the formation of the sun slams together to form the dwarf planets. As they take shape, the heavier rocky material sinks to the center and forms a hot molten core. Slushy water ice floats to the top. For a while, it stays liquid. But once the core cools, it freezes and forms the solid mantle and crust. That surface should still be solid, so the salt patches remain a perplexing mystery. We still haven't answered the question, how could there actually still be liquid water on Ceres? That's still a hard question to answer. Um, one way this could happen is if, if it's not actually pure water, if you've mixed it with something else. Some scientists have proposed that a salty ocean lies beneath the surface. The high concentration of salt lowers the freezing point of the water, keeping it liquid. When asteroid impacts fracture the crust, 
This salty water oozes up from below. The liquid swiftly evaporates, but the salt remains, leaving a brilliant white spot on the surface. In fact, I'm willing to bet there could be water coming up now, bringing salts up to the surface, evaporating away into space, and that means liquid water is very close to the surface of Ceres right now. Ceres has an even more startling card up its sleeve. Recent research suggests that it's an immigrant. It didn't form anywhere near the asteroid belt. Ceres may have been born alongside hundreds of other dwarf planets, many billions of miles away from the sun. So how did it get here? Most of the dwarf planets we've discovered lie far out in the solar system, beyond the orbit of Neptune. But Ceres orbits between Mars and Jupiter in the asteroid belt. But its location isn't the only hint. Ceres might be an interloper. Normally, celestial objects are made of the same materials as the other bodies in their neighborhoods. But that's not the case with Ceres. The asteroid belt is mostly made up of dry, rocky bodies composed of the same heavy elements that form the rocky inner planets. Ceres is very different. Ceres is essentially an icy world, right? It's, it's made out of ices instead of rocks. And so that's kind of weird considering where it is. The ice on Ceres also contains chemical compounds that in the early years of the solar system didn't exist in the asteroid belt. The more we learned about Ceres, the more mysterious it became. One of the things is that Ceres has quite a lot of ammonia on it, and we don't find ammonia anywhere near the inner part of the solar system. But we do find it in the outer solar system. We've detected ammonia on Pluto, its moon Charon, and out in the frozen Kuiper belt where we find the other dwarf planets. We think that the origin of that ammonia would have had to be in a very cold part of the solar system, colder than where we find Ceres today. But how an icy dwarf planet with ammonia came to inhabit a place where ammonia can't form, that's a huge puzzle. This suggests to us that Ceres perhaps formed in the outer solar system and then migrated inwards to its present location in the asteroid belt. We used to think that planetary orbits were completely immutable, that they were simply ran like clockwork and they didn't move around. Now we know that that's not the case. In the early stages of planet formation, planets move around through the gaseous disk uh, that encircles the young sun, much like rafts that are pushed around by ocean currents. Ceres' ammonia suggests that dwarf planets rafted around on the cosmic ocean along with the young planets. Ceres is sort of a smoking gun that solar systems are much more dynamic, much more dramatic than we know. There's mounting evidence that Ceres formed farther out in the solar system and something brought this little world in. What could possibly have done that? 